liked about me. I feel that you're quite brilliantly broken. You feel like my person? <laughs> you feel like my person. What's the worst thing you've ever done? I saw things. I shouldn't have seen any of it. Someone dies. A crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes something so bad happens that the soul cannot rest. Until you put the wrong things right. You were given the power of a god. But you're running out of time to save her. I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. I killed you. Yeah, you did. We have a problem. He came for us. First impulse. Anger. It's not anger. It's love. What you become? You know that love promises only pain. You have no idea what hell awaits you. No, I do. How many people have you loved? I'll never be alone. What drew me to The Crow was uh, a conversation with Rupert Sanders. It was before I read the script, um, and I was auditioning for it, uh, and we had uh, like a, a great conversation about what he his vision for it was, and and how he his interpretation, like how he wanted to kind of reimagine the story. Uh, uh, and we talked a lot about Eric, and and uh, and uh, and yeah, and then we had like. Uh, like maybe a week's process where we would just like send th stuff to each other. Um, and it was kind of this like dating phase of seeing oh, like how we would collaborate together. And, and uh, uh, I got a very strong sense of this Eric that he wanted to tell or portray or I wanted to kind of build out. So, so that was kind of the seed for me. A similar story actually. I met with Rupert and we had a tea. And um, I, I didn't have a script, actually. I signed on to the film before a script. But he said to me that my job in the film would be to create a character that is so warm and so lovable that when Shelley dies, it just feels like there's a huge hole in the movie. And I thought that was a really incredible challenge. And I know that The Crow has such a cultural legacy. Anyway, you know, that's always going to draw me into a project. His journey throughout his sort of transformation that he goes through um, as this kind of fragile um, soul in the beginning of it, uh, and uh, how he kind of meets Shelley and projects all of his hopes and dreams for for life again onto her, um, and then when he loses her, he has absolutely nothing left, uh, and that kind of transition from from 
and then from hope and then from basically sacrifice and resignation and just hate towards the end. I think that I've always had a, a great hope and love, you know, a, a great wish to find something that's so magical and so beautiful that it can last forever. Um, so in that way, I think it was really amazing to be able to play a role of somebody that meets that and finds that and finds a lover who literally wants to go through the depths of hell um, for love and for the relationship. Um, so, so in that way, it was just really beautiful to be able to be in love on screen and to explore what that means to meet someone and all of those amazing early days. Did we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, did, I felt like we just got along straight away. Like it was yeah. very, well for me anyway, it was very instant. Yeah. Yeah. I think the first time we met was like we were doing a read through. Yeah, I came, sort of. to, yeah, I came, came to, to the room, yeah, and we did a little read through. Right, but I think it was like on this, at the studio, and we were like, yeah, and we it was like. The Polaroids. Well, the Polaroids as well. Yeah. But I remember that time of just like, meeting you and then like we're going into this kind of script session and I can't remember that oh um and I was just like oh here's you know just going like 100 miles an hour just trying to like figure out what we were doing I can't Do you remember, remember that, that? no, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no um, I, my first memory is that I went to your hotel and then we sat outside on the balcony and we went through the script oh yeah but that was I think that was after this the session <laughs> But then yeah. I also have a memory that so you're the like, first... Right, we need to talk as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, no. With, it was Rupert there when we first Yeah, met. it was Rupert and the writer as well, I think. I have a bad um, I think we got to know each other very quickly because of it. I mean, we were there and there was, like, so much that I think that we needed to figure out their dynamic and, like, how are we, how are we going to be able to, uh, in such a short amount of time, tell this love story that never gets to flourish as well as Shelly having this very, you know, secret or baggage that she's carrying. Um, um, so we, there was a lot of things that we, I think we needed to sort of figure out and solve and that drew us together. And, 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 and uh, uh, um, yeah, we started like working and trying to figure out the dynamic of it. And I think uh, for me, at least, it was like so important that like we have so little time on screen uh, to tell the story that like every second of it eric is so much in love <laughs> um uh, that was so important because it was like we did not have enough of time it felt like so it was just like the chemistry and the love and the the the, the sort of uh, uh magnetism towards these two is like pivotal um, i think with eric and shelly a lot of it's in between the lines as well yeah, for sure. You know, that's actually where the bulk of the storytelling is of how much they like each other. But um, it was easy because I felt like we were just always having like a good time on set together. And, for sure. And we're, we both were able to be very vulnerable with each other from the beginning and just build a really amazing friendship. So that helped. Yeah, yeah. If it's uh, We knew that the whole movie kind of uh, makes or breaks on that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, well, I was obviously so excited to work with them because they're iconic and they came to London and, and we were hanging out and I actually took them to this, I guess it's like a art and design collective um, called Fantastic Twirls. And it's a group of young people that have been to fashion college, some haven't from all around the world, and they make these amazing clothes all from hand, and it's this idea that, that they're all one-off. And um, it, it's been a real source of inspiration for me, specifically over the pandemic, to see the culture in London and to see young people creating things. So I, we all went and basically went shopping there for our characters. So actually some of your stuff came from that shopping trip that I did in London. I don't oh. know if you know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and some bits for me as well. So you should be part credited for the design oh, of no. Eric as well. No, no, no. no. But, but, but it was just really in incredible because I, I, I felt like I wanted to be able to infuse the film of, 
with what's happening now in youth culture and, and the movements artistically that are happening now. So actually even the opera dress um, that the singer wore was um, made by a friend of mine called Freya. So it's all, a lot of the costume actually came from my community in London and that was really incredible because I think even with Shelley, she's someone who's clearly dialed in, you know, she's cool, she's going out, she knows the music, she's got friends, you know, she's, she's clearly very much immersed in a scene so it felt very real to me to bring what I do in London into the film and, you know, so you'd walk on set and I'd be like, I know who made that t-shirt, you know, in my head, like it felt very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. For Eric, it was, uh, uh, we wanted the look to kind of come organically throughout the movie. So it's not like um, a conscious clown face he puts on, you know, or, or just happens to appear like that, you know, and so it's gradual. Um, and, um, and the turning of the inside of the coat that sort of, um, you know, we planted it in the scene uh, uh, with Eric and Shelley uh, uh, in the White Sheets apartment in the beginning of the movie uh, where they're just trying clothes on and there's this kind of cool vintage uh, uh, trench coat there and then that organic, when he reappears and that uh, 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 comes back to that apartment, he finds the coat inside out and puts it on. And uh, So it's these kind of organic pieces that he's, throughout the movie, he's becoming the crow organically. And the same thing with the, with the makeup then, it's, it's sort of, uh, it just sort of, how it happens in the moment, sort of organically. Um, um, and that kind of, it also informs, I think, for me, how I played Eric, because uh, um, um, the way that our movie is structured is when he becomes a crow, he's lost everything, and he knows he's lost everything. Um, so he's kind of giving in to this hate inside of himself that he becomes this monster. Uh, and he doesn't like what he's becoming. So there's no sort of, his transformation to the crow is not enjoyable for him. You know, it's not, it's not like, um, it's not a final hurrah or anything. It's just uh, hate and vengeance. Um, um, and I thought that was important that like, um, that he looks himself in the mirror when he's all dialed, like painted on and the coat on and everything. And he basically hates what he sees. For me, I feel that Eric and Shelley just have an amazing romance together and and I felt like the time that we spent investing in the storytelling of that really has come through in the final cut of the movie, so I'm so happy. And I think if I had one sort of qualm with a lot of modern filmmaking is I find sometimes that I don't feel invested enough in the characters, especially in love stories, like sometimes everything's so quick, there's like this feeling of urgency constantly, but even in this action-packed movie, we've managed to slow time down, you know, when we were together in our characters, and, and I think that's so rare, and it's, it's something, we put work into it, but then it's sort of happened by accident as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? It's just so, nat it's so natural what's happened, and um, that was my biggest fear, that, that that wouldn't come across, and it really has, and, and so I think, for me, the film starts in one way and then it just has this dramatic turn. It's almost like the genre completely shifts. So it's incredible to see love like that on a big screen. But when I saw the second half of the movie, because obviously I wasn't there for a lot of the time when Bill became the crow, the action is incredible. The scenes, you know, and, and I love, you know, I do martial arts, I've done stunt training and stuff. So for me to, to see and, and understand a little bit of how it works. The choreography is truly a work of art. And although, you know, it's quite, it's quite scary. It's beautiful as well, though. It's so beautiful, like the, um, just the mathematical choreography of it all. I, I definitely think that people that are into fight scenes and, and action and all of those things will really enjoy this film. Yeah, think? yeah, no, I and I agree. I think uh, in general, like all movies are better in theater, uh, and I think just like um, it's it's kind of a shame that we've gotten so accustomed to just watching everything streamed or you know it's out in the theaters and then two weeks later you can watch it at home, um, and uh, 
you know, this is a, it's a big romantic epic, you know? Um, and, uh, um, yeah, to Twix's point, it's, it's a pretty big, majestic, bloody, beautiful climax to it as well. Um, but it's the journey and it's, uh, it's a story about two outsiders, really.